This is the Berman Project. Hey, it's Shay D here, back for another week of introspection and reflection on loss, grief, and the pathway to mental wellness, all the while nourishing my soul with the music and art of the late indie rock singer, songwriter, David Berman. How are you doing, motherfuckers? I am mostly okay. I am on the upward stretch of down, I think. Like, I think I'm, if I'm a pendulum, I'm, I'm swinging upward right now, which I'm, you know, to be very clear with you, I am not a pendulum. If you tuned into this podcast to hear a pendulum speak, then, well, you just come to the wrong place, quite frankly. Uh, what we do here on the Berman Project is we, we listen to Berman music and we read a Berman poem. And I try and work on some stuff. That's pretty much it. That's what we do here week over week. Hope you're enjoying yourself. I'm looking out my window right now. It's, it's very bright, uh, but not sunny bright. It's, it's like a, the whiter shade of gray in, in a gray day, but it's bright and it's uh, relatively, uh, relatively warm out. So I should go for a walk at some point, but I don't know if I will. I've been trapped in my house for the week. I've been really laying low, and it's not good. It's not good for your old pal JD to lay low. Bad things tend to happen when he does that. And um, nothing bad has happened so far except for I'm, I'm just low. I'm, I'm not well, and it sucks to feel that way. I want to take my daughter to a baseball game tonight, and I am reticent to go. For no reason other than anxiety. And that's a tough pill to swallow because I don't want to give in to anxiety and have my daughter not be able to do things that she should be able to do that other kids get to do with their parents. Sorry, I've got a THC lozenge in my mouth. I'm fucking wound up and this stuff calms me down but it makes it difficult to podcast with unless I put it just in the right spot in my mouth and then you don't even know it's there. <laughs> so there's that. What makes it really difficult when I'm on the downswing of things is staying motivated. And I just want to talk for a bit about staying motivated and trying to find you know, a reason to stay motivated you know, when, when you're low. And if you're like me at all, the motivation is one of the first things to go. You'll, you'll notice that you don't have the get up and go to do some of the things that should just be straightforward to do, you know, like dailies of, uh, activities of daily living, um, brushing your teeth, washing, showering, that stuff, you know, goes away on me. And, uh, you know, it's not good. <laughs> um, from there, from there, it, 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 it attacks like the creativity, you know, and the creativity uh, goes away. And so, you know, it ends up me sitting at the computer just like a zombie going through social media, like, a, like an absolute zombie. And um, not being motivated with that to use my set of skills that I talked about with you earlier on, um, which were the calm skills, create, activate, learn, meditate. Those things... I really, those are tools that work when, well, I don't know when they work, but they work sometimes, but not all the time. It's an occasional fix. It's an occasional fix. But 
I know that when I'm not interested in learning anything new or, you know, um, I'm just sitting here eating pot, you know, for no good reason. And, uh, like doing that interview last week, that was so, uh, I did an interview for meeting Malcolmus with the producers of, um, louder than you think. And it was really great, but I had to get so high to do it. <laughs> so it's getting to the point now where, you know, I very rarely get behind the microphone unless I'm, unless I'm experimenting with, um, marijuana of some sort, smoked or, or eaten. So don't find motivation in marijuana because it's not there. I don't think it's fleeting. It shows up, and then when you need it, it's gone. Uh, or at least the marijuana I'm taking. If you're using marijuana that is really works creatively and keeps you motivated to go out for walks and things like that, tell me what it's called. Uh, send me an email, jd at mediumalchemist.com. I would love to know. Also, if it doesn't make you binge eat, <laughs> that would be great too. Because I looked at when I lost a chunk of weight last month and it was I wasn't using any marijuana I wasn't using it I start using it again I put on the weight so it's it's all there for me it's all and then I spin out of control I ruminate and I spin out of control and you know all hell breaks loose so motivation is important and wherever you find it try and find it in a place that's safe not uh, the bottom of a bottle or, you know, and, I, and I'm talking to my ass here because um, that's sort of where I'm at right now. But don't be me. Do you. So there's that. I think that uh, it's important to understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish when you sit down at the computer um, or the phone, you know, so you're not just like a succubus that is pulling energy from the sky as you sit behind this device and have it block you off. I don't know. I don't know. I really have nothing. Let's listen to some music. Hey, Dad, she 
Jesus had long hair and dad says, that's right, son. Jesus walked everywhere. When I was younger, I was a cobra. In every case, I wanted to be cool. Now that I'm older, the subspace is colder. Just want to say something true careful not to step on that shit you gotta be so careful that is the frontier index and that's a tremendous little jam um if you're into you know Burmanisms, there are some great Burmanisms in there the robot in the bar the kid talking to his dad about the car um you know the, just these quick like four stanza uh four line stanzas that you know, just get you through and uh, make you grin. Uh, a lot of fun. Real good song. A lot of fun. Let's uh, find out what Chat AI thought of Frontier Index. The Frontier Index is a song by American indie rock band Silver Jews. It was released on their third studio album, American Water, in 1998. The song was written by the band's frontman, David Berman. Musically, the, front, the Frontier Index is a slow waltz like ballad with a simple chord progression and sparse instrumentation. Berman's vocals are understated and melancholic, giving the song a reflective, introspective quality. Lyrically, the song is about the American West and the idea of the frontier as a symbol of both possibility and isolation. Berman paints a picture of a landscape that is simultaneously beautiful and desolate, a place where dreams and ambitions can be realized, but where loneliness and despair can also take hold. The chorus is particularly poignant. And we can't keep moving house every three years to find some big town enough to support a stationary store. This line captures the sense of restlessness and rootlessness that often accompanies life on the frontier, as well as the frustration and disillusionment that can come from constantly seeking something better. Overall, the Frontier Index is a haunting and evocative song that captures both the romance and the harsh realities of life in the American West. Wow, that couldn't be much more off could it <laughs> um those are fun to do though i'm going to keep doing that unless you think i shouldn't let me know jd at mediumalchemist.com would love to know what you think let's go to actual air and our poem this week it's a good one it's uh it's called the homeowner's prayer the homeowner's prayer and it's from actual air and here we go The moment held two facets in his mind. The sounds. The moment held two facets in his mind. The sound of lawns cut late in the evening and the memory of a push up regimen he had abandoned. It was Halloween. An alumni newsletter lay on the hall table, but he would not, could not read it. For his hands were the same emotional structures in 1987 as they had been in 1942. Nothing had changed. He had remained his tendency to fall in love with supporting actresses renowned for their near miss with beauty. Nothing had changed. He had retained his tendency to fall in love with supporting actresses renowned for their near miss with beauty. And coffee still caused the toy ideas he used to try out on the morning carpools, a sweeping reorganization of the company's softball league, or how to remove algae from the windows of a houseboat. 
He remembered a morning when the carpool had been discussing how they'd like to die, the best way to go. He just said, he said, why are you talking about this? Just because everyone has died so far doesn't mean that we're going to die. But he had waited too long to speak. They were already in the parking garage, and now two of them had passed away. It was Halloween, another Pennsylvania sunset, back down the local mountain, spraying the colors of a street fighter's face onto the narrative wallpaper of a boy's bedroom. Once he thought all he would ever need was a house with time and circumstance. He slowly made his way into the kitchen and filled a bowl with apples and raisins. The clock was learning to be the clock was learning to be 634. The windows bent to within decimals of the lawn. It was Halloween. Wow. I like the repeated it was Halloween. I'm you know, the filling the bowl with apples and raisins, getting ready for people to, you know, come to your house for trick-or-treating. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I like, <laughs> I like that uh, just because everyone has died so far doesn't mean we're going to die. And then he had waited too long to speak. They were already in the parking garage and now two of them had passed away. That's pretty fucking choice. Berman again, coming through. Really great stuff. Fantastic. Love it. That's what I got for you this week. Stay hungry, stay foolish, and wash your goddamn hands. The Berman Project is a production of Duvra Podcasts and Such. You can find out more about the show at www the Berman Project dot X, Y, Z. That's right. I'm fucking Canadian. I'm also social. Find me on Twitter, Instagram, and all the rest at Berman Project. Duvra. Podcasts and such. <laughs>